name is my name is Danny Ryan. I work with the Ethereum Foundation. Um, I work on the research team. I do some research, uh, a lot of spec writing, um, some development, testing, and a lot of client coordination to try to keep this E2 project moving forward. Um, and today, especially because we're at this hackathon, I want to highlight that we're really moving into a new phase in this project in that um, up until recently, it's been a lot of like core protocol development, but it's really beginning to enter into a phase where a lot of hackers, uh, community members can really begin to get more and more involved. Uh, so until recently, uh, it's been a project really dominated by uh, protocol researchers and protocol engineers, uh, some of which are here, some fantastic engineers in the house that are building this out. Um, and you know what? Everyone gets a gold star. Uh, people have been working their asses off. Uh, well for over a year now, and things are coming to fruition. But uh, at this point, it's really time to usher in like the next wave of contributors, uh, just uh, engineers, designers, UX, UI, uh, validators are going to start getting their hands dirty, uh, educators, a lot of good educational efforts going around, um, auditors, academics, got some good papers in the pipeline, and just the community in general. Um, and I'm, I'm really eager to uh, give out some more gold stars and uh, maybe a ton of them. So today I want to talk to you about just the state of things uh, and how, um, where things are today and how you can begin to get involved and maybe some ideas for hacks this weekend. So we've been building. We've been building a lot. Uh, what have we been building? We're building a, a scalable proof of stake infrastructure. Um, and there's some nuance to that. I'm not, sometimes usually I get up in talks and I talk about this thing. This is like, the architecture of the thing we're building. I won't spend a lot of time on that today, um, but we are building this scalable infrastructure that has many shard chains uh, to scale out the things that we know and love in Ethereum. Um, and actually, the end goal is to not have this ETH1 chain exist there anymore, uh, but instead, um, following Piper's research and development, slot a stateless Ethereum that we know and love today um, into this scalable infrastructure to give it native access to scalable data, uh, proof of stake security, and to eliminate proof of work in that uh, hefty block reward. So happy to talk about this, happy to dig in. There's a ton of like experts at this system, um, and we can, we can chat about it all weekend, but I won't spend too much time on that right now. Um, so we're trying to provide a multidimensional scale. Uh, we're scaling out security. Uh, proof of stake has some fundamental um, benefits. Uh, insecurity because the assets securing the protocol is native and so we can do uh, not just reward people but punish them if they're bad. Um, we're scaling out data in the form of these mini shard chains uh, and we're scaling out computation uh, by adding uh, native execution onto these shard chains. Um, and that's actually the phases of our development you can think of. We have this thing called phase zero, phase one and phase two. Phase zero is really like bringing together the core security, the core infrastructure. Uh, Phase one is adding the scalable data, and phase two is adding the scalable computation. So uh, where are we at today? The, the, the system uh, is what we've been working on. The core system, we call this the beacon chain. Uh, this provides core mechanisms, uh, finality. It, it provides the scaffolding upon which the shard chains will be built. It has uh, validator management, randomness, uh, incentivization. And this is really, if you've heard about what's going on with these test nets and, and where things are at, this core system this, uh, that the, the other components of the system are architected upon is where, uh, where all the effort has been today. Um, I don't really know what those images are. Um, so, but where are the clients at today? We have many ETH2 clients, uh, depending on the day, seven or eight. Um, and this is an incredible thing. Uh, once this, the ETH2 project uh, began to get some uh, concrete specs, a lot of people came out of the woodwork and are excited to build this thing. Uh, so we have a, a ton of client diversity in many different languages. Uh, this adds to the robustness, ultimately, of the network. Uh, if one client gets DOS, the other ones kind of take up the load. Um, and I, I love clients in many different languages because it provides having a, a robust client implementation in a language, it really provides a gateway into the system uh, because that, that provides a lot of the core infrastructure, the core tooling, and, and kind of the whole uh, developer uh, ecosystem can blossom and bloom out of a client implementation as more and more people get involved. So anyway, where are we at today? We have many single client test nets. Um, 
clients are heavily focused on optimizations to reduce the load of this core system chain. Um, that's really important because uh, the beacon chain is this highly available component of the system. Uh, pretty much if you're syncing any shard or one shard or ten shards or all the shards, um, you run this beacon chain in conjunction with it. And so we want, we want beacon chains to be run everywhere. We want this like core system level uh, piece to be run very easily, very cheaply. Um, and so optimizations are crucial. Um, a lot of effort going into validator and user onboarding, um, getting more and more people to, to play with these things, fix CLIs, have new interfaces, UX, UI, um, and stability. These systems uh, need to have almost 100% uptime um, and work under crazy network conditions. And so this is uh, you know, this heroic work going on uh, with these client teams. Um, and there's a number of them here today uh, and this weekend that would, uh, can tell you all about it. Like I mentioned before, uh, now that we have this, like, this core, the core protocols coming together, we have an increasing amount of activity uh, spawning, from the, from the, spawning out from the center. Block explorers, network visualizers, uh, dev tools, Proto's got this great network REPL he's working on, um, a lot of audits going on, econ audits, deep audits, um, DOS audits, formal verification work, kind of tying formal proofs um, of some of the things that we really care about, like safety and liveness to uh, the protocol, uh, a lot of academic analysis, validator tools, bounty hunters. I want to give a shout out to Herman, don't know your last name, but Herman found a uh, potential overflow in the spec the other day. He's our first uh, winner of a bounty. Um, we're going to be next week uh, doing some fanfare around the uh, official launching, relaunching of the bounty program. And you. Um, it's a hackathon. I know people like to get their hands dirty with like dApps and build out some stuff, but like there is a huge chance because ETH2 is in kind of its infancy and really rapidly expanding right now um, to make your mark, uh, to make a new service provider, make uh, a new tool that's going to make validators' lives easy and, and, and kind of snowball and grow with the ecosystem. So um, we at the EF have posted um, some ETH Denver bounties. Uh, these are uh, very, they're open-ended, uh, but there's some great ideas on there um, in that we're going to give a 2500 reward for first place, 1500 and 1000 for second and third. Um, and the idea is to um, you know, take a more integrative approach, uh, take some test nets, uh, build out new tooling, make, you know, just ex get your hands dirty and play with what is out there um, and kind of enhance the burgeoning, growing E2 ecosystem. Um, I'm stalling a little bit. If you want that, it's there. Uh, it's on some of the ETH Denver resources. Uh, we're tweeting it. Check it out. Uh, there's a lot of people, including myself, that would love to talk to you about bounty ideas um, and help you work through some stuff throughout this weekend. Check it out. So I want to go over some of, the, uh, some of the hacks you might think about. This is just a sample. This is not uh, what you must do, but just get, get, your, uh, get your thoughts going. Um, so there's a few clients that do have test nets, um, and if you were to uh, hack on test nets, uh, try to break test nets, um, any kind of that fun stuff, uh, you check out Prism, Lighthouse, Nimbus. Prism's written in Go, Lighthouse is written in Rust, and Nimbus is written in Nim, which is a cool like Pythonic compiled language. Um, check it out. Uh, some test net ideas. Um, you know, we until today. Uh, a lot of these test nets have been operating on near like 100% honesty, just because validators show up, like potential users in the community show up, they run uh, run the software and just like crank it out, watch the number go up or number go down, depending on if they have a good connection. Um, so, but more and more, we want to see people try to break things. Um, how many validators do you need to control? How many nodes do you need to control to really do something nefarious on a network? And if you're able to do something nefarious, can the other nodes kind of handle the maybe potential extra load, uh, resolve themselves, and, and work from there? Um, so evil validators, um, you know, can you make multiple blocks when you're only supposed to make one? Um, can you make attestations that try to partition the network and, and mess up finality? Um, partition network could be really interesting. Uh, to write some tools to spin up some local test nets um, and then or orchestrate a partition in them. Uh, everything kind of turns along and then resolve the partition all of a sudden. Um, what type of load ex exhibits on both the network as a whole and on individual clients? And, and can the uh, partitions be resolved safely? Uh, noisy network, we have a new 
a handshake protocol we're working on, a uh, libp2p protocol called libp2p noise protocol. Um, so there's some opportunity to potentially implement that protocol and embed it in a network. Uh, but sky's the limit. There's a lot of cool stuff to do. Um, and you know, if you're into just like scripts and tools and networks and stuff, like DevOps kind of stuff, like it'd be a pretty fun weekend to mess with some of this stuff. Um, testnet resources. Lighthouse, uh, the past couple of days have put together, they spun up a, a new testnet last night uh, with 4,000 validators. Um, they kept the, the, the number relatively low to be easy to sync um, and potentially be easier to attack. Uh, so check out that link for their, they put together an ETH Denver specific book. They're going to be available uh, to help you hack. Uh, Prylabs.net, Prismatic, Prismatic Labs is running like a 35,000 uh, validator net. Uh, it's, it's chugging along. It's pretty cool. Um, and the Nim Beacon Chain, they relaunch a net every week uh, so you can check out their net. And all these, um, you can run like local small networks on your machine or um, spin them up as you go. Oh, sorry, I'm jiggling my computer. Uh, web tools and monitoring. Huge shout out to uh, Lodestar. Lodestar is a JavaScript client and um, they're packaging all of their modules into these like sub packages um, and there's a ton of them. Um, but because of that, and because it's written in JavaScript, it's a great um, tool to begin to use to build out browser-based and developer-friendly things. Um, for example, um, some of the hacks you might think about are hack part of Lodestar in a web page, maybe summarize beacon states, uh, verify deposits before a validator sends them in for extra safety, um, take one of the test nets and monitor deposits, monitor validator states, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, super shout out to these guys. Um, and Cayman, I don't think he's here yet, but uh, the lead on the project is around all weekend. Um, and yeah, enhanced Teku monitoring. Uh, Teku is in Java. Artemis, uh, it was named Artemis. It's recently been changed to Teku. Um, they have some cool stuff. Uh, they're on the, on the cusp. You know, I think they're running some like, local networks um, and are about to be in that testnet ready phase. Um, so there's some cool stuff to help them uh, get to where they, uh, they want to be. Um, and Jim, uh, this guy over here, uh, is one of the leads on the project. He's here this weekend to chat with you if you're interested in getting involved. Uh, mobile, last uh, hack I'm going to mention is uh, the Nimbus guys um, last week managed to hack some phones and get Nimbus and Nimbika chain running on a test net of mobile devices. Um, I think it took some like rooting and, and kind of bypassing normal, uh, normal safety mechanisms in Android. Uh, so uh, an extension of the work would be potentially to run Nimbus uh, within uh, an Android app, within a more like sanctioned environment, easier for people to get going. Um, and if you can get it running on those phones, bonus points. Um, cool. So TR, TLDR is uh, like this project is um, increasingly there for you to hack on, get involved, uh, run some test nets, break things, have a good time, um, and dig in. And, and if you if you want to make a mark, like now, like the next the next few months, next six months is a great time to like really make a mark on E2. Um, I think I have. Extra, I've left plenty of time. I'm happy to take questions both about ETH2 infrastructure, uh, about ETH2 direction, roadmap, about, and also about any of these hacks. And if I can't answer uh, the question, some of these guys can because we have a bunch of client engineers and stuff in, in the house. Questions? Please, come to the mic so that on the live stream they can hear you. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. I'm in the mic over here. I'm just waving my hands in the air. There's one right here. My bad. Uh, how do you manage your bounties? This is just like a manual process. How do we manage the process of the bounties? Yeah. Um, it's a little top down. Uh, myself and Proto are going to be judging. Um, they're going to be judged on the usefulness uh, to ETH2 in the coming months. Honestly, it's um, whether it's it, it making a tangible impact on the ETH2, ETH2 ecosystem. Oh, sorry, I should have clarified. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to know that. Uh, the other. Oh, the bounties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, the, um, yeah. So we had a bounty program. We had previously frozen the uh, specification last June and had a bounty program um, on GitHub. The standards were pretty much like whether you uh, find something in which like we actually have to change the spec. Um, 
this was this bounty program was um, suspended after DevCon because we had a number of spec changes, um, and we're about to re-release. And this time, I think we're gonna. Uh, have a, a few different ranks like critical bugs, uh, not so critical. Um, but it, essentially, the standard is: do we find something that is that we need to make substantial changes to the spec? Um, the bounty program we make we have a release of the spec coming out next week, in which we'll relaunch the bounty program. But if you find something this weekend and you break the spec, um, I'm you get a bounty. Like if you want a bounty hunt this weekend, by all means. <clears throat> Any other questions? Um, a lot of us like sleep, breathe, eat, live this stuff. Uh, we're here all weekend. Happy to, always happy to talk about it. Always happy to work through technical stuff. Happy to bounce ideas around um, and get more people involved. But uh, last chance while I'm up here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we got. Proto, we got Michael from Lighthouse, Jim, um, Matt from Quilt, Ivan from uh, Prismatic. There's a lot of people here that uh, want to help out and uh, help you get involved and run test nets and do cool stuff this weekend. So uh, come find us. Thank you.